So hi guys, how you doing? Welcome to my channel again. Uh, thank you so much for the love. Um, I have over 1,000 subscribers now and that's huge for me because I mean like, yeah, it's YouTube. Everything is not so easy on YouTube, yeah. But 1,000 is a lot and thank you so much. Um, I posted it on Instagram. I'm still gonna do a little more advertising but thank you so much for following me. I really, really do appreciate it. And thank you for the views. The views are very impressive. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So, yeah. Welcome to my channel again. And today we'll be talking about... Drum roll. How to get an American visa. I know a lot of Nigerians would love this topic because, well, if you put a plane out there and you say, Hey, how many Nigerians want to go to America? <laughs> a lot of them want to go. I mean that... Uh, you know, a lot of people want to go to America because, I mean, it's America. It's God's own state. If you tell Nigerians that I've not been to America, they think America is heaven. And we that have been to America are like, oh, okay. It's cool, but it's not heaven like we thought it was um, um, before we traveled. But, yeah, welcome to my channel. I'm going to tell you how to get an American visa. I, 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 um, let me tell you a story, all right? Um, about um, 10 years ago, 10 9 i'm not very accurate but 10 9 years ago um i went to apply for an american visa all right so my sister traveled to america and she lives there now with her husband and then it was just it was a year after she had traveled and i was in my third year in the university of lagos i studied psychology by the way just in case you didn't know i studied psychology so it was my third year in in school unilag and I decided to apply for an American visa because my sister said, look, why would they not give you? You come back, like, why would you want to go stay in America? Like, you never really liked living abroad. So basically, I said, why not? So I went, I applied, and I got a date. So, <laughs> I got a date, yeah. And I, I, you know, when you're applying, you see people, that time weren't, the phones weren't, like, social media was, wasn't like this. So basically, I met this guy where I was applying in Walter Current in close to the American Embassy. He told me everything. Like, um, he does visa for people, celebrities, blah, blah, blah. That if I paid a certain amount of money, he was going to get me a visa. And I was like, oh, cool. So he asked for 100,000 naira. Like, that, this was like 10 years ago. And he asked for 100,000 naira. And I'm like, okay. You know, we negotiated to like 50,000 naira. And I paid him the 50,000 naira. He filled my form. And gave me different tips and he actually said he was going to follow me to my interview. You know how American interview, okay, well, you don't know. Let's assume you've never been to America yet. The ones I'm doing this video for. So basically, you apply online and they give you dates for an interview um, at the embassy. So I got a date to go, at, go for an interview at the embassy. So I got there with this guy who told me he had a huge connect. Got there with this guy. Of course, they, they won't let you take your bag in or your phone in or anything inside the embassy. You have to go as you can. Like, you know, with your... Um, yeah, you go with your shoes, of course, and your clothes, of course, but nothing else. No documents except the documents you have to give them. The, the one you filled that you have to give them to My sign up. Mind you, that. and the embassy has like an 8 o'clock session. Uh, I think 8, 12, and 3. It's three um sessions every day so this particular session was around eight in the morning so i'd already been there for hours like two hours before eight o'clock so i i went there about six o'clock i chilled because according to him he said i should go early because they give early people in the afternoon they'll probably be tired and be giving you and you know not giving you the visa so i went there very early uh, and you know i got there and i met hundreds of people I mean, they came there before me. I came around 6 o'clock and I met a whole lot of people that were there before me. So we queued, stayed another two hours. Eventually, eventually, we uh, I got inside. We were filling my form, you know. And let me go back again. This guy told me that don't dress up. Don't wear, don't wear your, you know, wig or your artificial hair. Be natural as possible. Don't wear makeup. Don't let them think you're a slay queen or whatever. Um, he said, what else? Uh -huh. Pack your natural hair. Um, no makeup. Uh, what else? He said a few things that I was like, okay, you know what? He said, you have to look like, you know, you're not going there to run away because if they see you and you're a little flashy, they'll probably think you want to run away. So... Basically, I went to the embassy to the interview without anything. So I was wearing a polo, 
I was wearing um uh a flat slipper. She told me no heels. So I was wearing a flat slippers. I had my natural hair, um, had no makeup on, like he instructed. So I went there, they were filling this form, and I was like, okay, so we got there. Eventually we entered after a few hours. We entered and then there's this queue inside the embassy. Alright? This queue that one person would go first, but the I mean people behind you would hear your conversation with the interviewer. So it got to my turn. Before my turn, like five people had been denied visa. So I'm like, this woman, yeah, because we had they had a lot of boots. And then this particular woman in front of me that I was like, this, this woman don't need to deny people though. Like, uh uh, I'm not going to this woman's place. Basically, so they had yeah, she had already denied five people before me. So when it got to my turn, it was the woman. I'm like, so then they said next. I refused <laughs> to go there. I refused. I was like, uh uh. That's not gonna happen. Mm -mm. So fortunately for for me, another guy went to the woman's uh, booth while I went to an Indian guy's booth. I went there and I was like, "Oh, hi, how you doing?" And the guy looked at me and he was like, "Okay, um, why do you want to go to America?" I'm like, "Just like that, so like chill, you know." So the guy said, why do you want to go to America? I'm like, okay, I'm going uh, to America because I want to go to my sister. Um, she's there with her husband. It's Christmas, you know. I would like to go there and just, you know, stay there for maybe a week or two and then come back. And the guy just looked at me and said, I started writing stuff on a sheet of paper. I'm like, okay. Maybe this guy wants to give me like, you know, I gave him, so you know, the, I gave him the excuses they want. I gave him evidence that I was going to come back. I even told him like, like, you know what? I'm in my third year. I, you know, when I come back, I'll be in my final year, blah, 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 blah. The guy just looked at me and kept on writing stuff. So while he was writing stuff, I was like, okay, I'm in my final year, blah, blah. And then he gave me my passport and the paper. So I looked at the paper and I saw denied. I don't know. Let me tell you what happened when I saw denied. Because I mean, like, prior to that time, I didn't understand why they would deny anybody visa. I, I really did not understand. So I looked when I saw denied, I'm like, my, my head just went boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what? What did I do? I thought I did everything right. But basically, so when I saw the denied, I was telling the guy, oh, God, no. No, I, I, I'm telling you that I'll come back. I'm not running away. Um, you can check my account. You can... The guy just did he did not look at me like he did not even act like there was, there was a human being in front of him he did not look at me at all so i was like okay please i'm talking to you could you, you and then he said security oh Gwenny. who is this one calling security for so he called security and then the guy came and you're like like the security just tell me to go and i'm like security i'm trying to explain to him he said, ma'am, please, you have to leave. Well, can I not explain? He said, ma'am, you have to leave. Oh. So I just, I just left. So I went outside. I had tears in my eyes. I was very angry. So I had tears in my eyes. And I saw this, you know, stupid guy who told me that he had to connect, you know. So I went there because he told me that if you, if I get in there, they see my name, they'll know that I'm his client and they'll give me a visa. So I w got there. Fortunately for me, he was still outside. So I saw him, I was like, Look, they denied me visa. And he said, hey, what did you do? Hey, did you not show them your name? Yes. I need my money back. I want a refund. And I'm like, no, you know, you trying to give them. Bish, I want a refund. You know, but eventually I didn't get a refund. And he told me to reapply the following week. So I try, I reapply, I tried to reapply. And while I was applying, if I asked a friend, and he said, why are you reapplying? I said, they denied me the first time. So let me just try the second time. I said, he said, if something, if your situation hasn't changed, listen, if your situation from last week hasn't changed, I mean, it can't change in a week, they will still deny you because you, the excuse you're bringing is the same excuse you brought last week anyway. So they will deny you and say, go home. And I was like, oh, it's true. Because I had... That woman telling people that please not reapply until you know your situation is changed. You know, so I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't reapply. So because I was angry at the embassy, I was angry at myself, I was angry at the visa guy. I was just 
I was just angry. Like, why would anybody deny me this? I'm going there. I'm not. I'm my final year. I won't leave school. I said I'm going to relocate, and I've never liked the idea of relocating anyway. So I refused to apply, and I didn't apply for. Um, I didn't apply for almost five years. Yeah, I didn't apply for almost five years. I didn't apply to get a visa, uh, American visa or a UK visa. I did Schengen and I got it because I mean, like, I applied with my sister and I got it at that point. But I didn't go back to the embassy. So what I was doing was American, the American embassy actually helped me um, be better. Like, I wanted my situation to change. I wanted to stand in front of them and say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I do. This is who I am. And I'm going there um, to either do something and coming back in a week for them to believe my story enough to give me a visa so i did not apply so five years later i'd already started my fitness um i was doing well financially i had uh, a car you know i had my own apartment so basically i was i was in a very good space and place and then linda was already linda you know she was already big and i was like you know what this time around i'm not gonna apply and say you know I'm so so pressing. I'm just gonna apply and tell them, look, this is what I do. This is what I do. It's what I'm going to do there. And blah blah blah. So five years later, I applied and went to the embassy. Look, listen, that that thing they tell you, don't dress up, don't wear heels, don't do this, don't do that, don't let them notice you. My darling, this time around, I wore my high heels. I had my hair on, had my makeup done. I had virtually everything. I looked really good, like, cause I had the confidence. I'm like, why would they want to deny me? For what? Well, I was scared because I had already been denied, so I, I had that in my history. But then I was myself. I I didn't intend to lie about anything. I was just saying, look, I'll just I'll just go and apply and see what happens. Whatever happens, happens. So I went to the embassy. I didn't apply through anybody. I wrote it myself. I filled my form myself. I submitted myself. Got a date myself. So I didn't spend any money except the visa fee, for, of, of course. So I went to the embassy, all dressed up with my wig, with my everything. And then, I think I saw Noboligwe that time. Was it Noboligwe? I think it was Nobo. So basically, I went there, all dressed up, got to the embassy, um, got to my interview booth, and the guy asked me, but, well, I didn't. I didn't say hi. How you doing? Oh, look, what's up? Uh, uh. Like, why would I want to do that? That's a lot of mistakes people do. Like, hi, how you doing? Don't you know me? I'm a fine girl. Uh, uh. I didn't do that. I went to the booth and I said, "Good afternoon." And he looked at me and said, "Good afternoon." You know how they are. They're very strict. So you, uh, uh, good afternoon. Why do you want to go to America? So wait. So thing when I said, "Okay, I'm going to Vegas." And he said, where are you going to? I said, I'm going to Vegas. And he looked at me. I said, I'm going to Las Vegas with my family, my sisters, my brother, and my parents. We're just going there to have fun. And he looked at me again. You're going to Vegas with your parents? I said, yeah. So he looked again. I said, I didn't say anything. And I said, okay, from Vegas, we'll be going to LA. And we'll be going to uh, Houston from there. And then we'll go to San Antonio. And he looked at me. I said, you're going to all these states? I said, yeah. How long are you gonna stay? I said I'm gonna stay for eight days. Um, I'm staying there eight for eight days, and um, after eight days I'm back. And he looked at me again. I was saying this confidently because I know because that was the truth. That's what I was going to do there. And he said, "Who is sponsoring this trip?" I said, "Well, I'm sponsoring myself, and my sister is sponsoring the um, other family members." And he looked at me. Who's your sister? And didn't say anything again. Say, what's your name again? I said, Laura. I didn't even say Laura Kid, I just said Laura. And he said, okay. And he just kept writing. So I thought, I was writing now, so I thought it was that same Wahala the last time. Like, what kind of disgrace is this now, eh? Please, now. And I was popping on Instagram already. I think I had over 50,000 followers at the time. I'm like, oh, don't deny me, I'm Laura Kid. You know? And he looked at me and just, he didn't smile. No, he just didn't have any expression. He looked at me and then wrote something on the paper. I'm like, okay. And then, he gave me the paper and I was I was like, okay, he had denied me. Give me my 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 passport. And he held my passport. I was like, so go to um go to uh DHL. Was it DHL? Yeah. Go to DHL VI and collect your visa on two days. 
So I looked at him like this. You know, because I mean, I hadn't gotten a visa before. So when they say go to DHL, like, well, I'm like, okay, does, did that mean, does that does that mean that I have the visa? And he said next. So I was looking at him, and he looked at me and said, "Please, I'm done with you." And I left. And when I left, I was, I I read the paper and I saw you have been given visa. Ah, go on, come on, see me, and you're like, yeah, I do, oh, I have to know. You know, so I felt so happy because. I mean, like, I did it myself. There was no agent, there's, there was nobody, and I was super, super duper happy. Um, and that's, that was how I got a visa. Uh, I didn't lie. Uh, I had an excuse to come back. Um, you know, I, I wasn't shaking. Well, like, the last time I was, it's like, I was fidgeting. I wasn't shaking. So basically, Nigerians that I haven't traveled before, don't let anybody deceive you. I'm going to give you tips on how to get an, an American visa. These people are, you know, very plain people. They like truthfulness. And I don't know, I don't know how, why, but Americans yeah. like this. So guys, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get an American visa in Nigeria. Um, rule number one, be as truthful as possible. I mean, you can't, you don't necessarily tell them the whole truth, but be as truthful as possible. Let them know that you have a reason to come back and that's basically what they want sometimes they don't even check your account um balance they don't check your pay slip they don't check all those you know evidence they just want to know that you're coming back so i try as much as possible to be as truthful as possible so if you're going to houston tell them you're going to houston and not la if you're going to la please tell them you're going to la and not new york so that you when when you want to even like say then it will catch you when you know when you, when you want you know tell lies you won't be you know you won't be stammering you'll be able to tell it confidently so basically be truthful say i'm going to new york for a conference you know yeah you know i'm going to come back in one week or in two weeks or in three weeks don't necessarily say one week and say they'll think they'll give you visa you can say in one month i'm i'm going to america for one month and i'm not coming back um until after one month and so i think they know know all that that you have to be as truthful as possible you know so tell them i'm going there for a conference and i'll be there after a conference i'll stay there for another two weeks and i'm going to visit family members and i'll be there for like three weeks instead of saying i'm going to the conference for two days and the third day i'm going to come back uh-uh the third day because they know that the third day you're not going to come back so don't tell them that you're going to come back the third day just tell them that you know you're going to a conference and then from there you go you'll probably go shop or go see family members and they will believe you simple and short so as be as truthful as possible rule number two please fill your form yourself so you don't contradict yourself like when they say what's your mother's name when, when they say what's your father's name when this just do your stuff yourself so you don't contradict yourself so rule number three please when you go to the interview don't fidget don't shake don't run away from interviewers because they know they see you like when they see that you're fidgeting or you're trying to go to the next one because you think this one is denying people they know i don't know how they see it but they see it so when you actually go to the interview just comport yourself chill like they are, if they want to give you they'll give you if they don't want, want to give you they don't give you so when you go there chill like chill it's like chill out because uh, on like UK visa, you have to show them evidence, your work, pay sleep. Like, America, don't, the embassy doesn't even check that sometimes. They check it when they want to find out things. Well, most times they don't, I don't know. Well, some, a few people that have actually gone there, my friends that have gone there, that they've given, they don't, sometimes they don't really check. It's when they're not sure that they start checking. So rule number four, please do have a reasonable reason to go to the embassy. Um, just don't go there because you want to go to America. Have a reason so that when they want to deny or give you, they don't they don't stress you, you don't stress yourself. So go there with a reasonable reason. Don't just go there and say, I have a sister, I have a brother, I have in fact that I don't think that helps in any way. So my advice is don't even tell them you have a family member there. I, I think when they think when they find out that you have a family member there, they just feel like you might not come back because you'll be very comfortable in your sisters or your brothers or your uncles or your mom's house so basically do not tell them that you have a sister who lives there or who's a citizen there or whatever i just feel like it's they feel like once you have but well, it's true once you have a comfortable sibling there why would you want to come back basically a lot of people want to run from there they know that how they know how nigerians are desperate enough 
to want to stay in America. Number five, guys. There are a lot of conferences happening all over the world, especially in America. So you can actually apply through companies that are going through this com through these conferences, rather. Uh, apply and then uh, see if you can actually go through these companies. And if you if you have a job in Nigeria, please apply and be truthful and say this is what I, I this is what I do and this is the amount I earn. It's not like you say, okay, I I am a businesswoman. And then you check your account you say okay because if you say you're a businesswoman they'll ask you how much you make in a month and and they ask you what you do and how much you make in a month and you say okay i sell clothes and i make 100 million in a month they know it's a lie like you can't make 100 million naira in a month you're not zara so they know it's a lie so don't try as much as possible to play yourself if you're a businesswoman and you haven't been to america before apply to apply and say okay i'm going to i'm going to shop and then they ask you how much you make in a month. If you if you make one million naira in a month, or if you make five hundred thousand naira in a month, please don't say you make ten million naira because they'll say, okay, if you sell this, how come you make so, so amount of money? It doesn't correlate. It doesn't it doesn't blend. It, the lie is not sweet enough. So basically, say I make hundred thousand naira a month, or I make five hundred thousand naira. They'll still give you whether you have money or you don't have money. They just know who they give who to give. And they like truthfulness, like I said. They love people who are truthful. So just say, I make so much money. Because I was at embassy when, um, that's how I got my visa. And there was a family, a man and his kids, his wife and his kids, um, that wanted to go to America. They asked him what he did for a living. He said he, he had a company that sold, um, that sold um, water or something like that. And they asked how much he made in a month. And he said he made like 15 million. Like 50 million ogre, you know, and they asked him to bring his documents because when they're not sure, they actually go through it. So I asked him to bring his documents. They were checking it. Said, but well, how much do you make in a month? You made two amounts here. And he said, well, he doesn't really put his money in the bank because he has it in his house. And it just the lie didn't blend. And they denied him visa and denied his entire family. So please, if you want to lie, let it be sweet. Do you understand? So if you actually make 100,000 naira, but, but I say you make 200,000 instead of say you make instead of saying you make 100 million please be as truthful as possible so I hope you enjoyed this video like I did <laughs> and I hope I'll be able to help some of you um try as much as possible to be truthful to these Americans they like truthfulness and please subscribe to this channel if you like this video give me a thumbs up girl Hi. give me a thumbs up and please um Please follow me on Instagram, Laura KG, and on Twitter, Laura KG. Give me a thumbs up again. And subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching this video. Mwah! <laughs> I'm so crazy.